you started it. He said that phrase, you started it. And I was like, this man needs psychiatric assistance. Exactly. Exactly, Daniel. This is unfortunately the the problem. He's not claiming that I released the first video on Kremnik being a farmer. Um, maybe he should become a farmer somewhere in Peru. Most evil person in, on the planet, Daniel. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, if you just stop emotionally uh, listening to this and just try to just try to reflect about the words, this is incredible what what Danny is saying. I mean, he might not like me. It's okay, but to to tell this, I mean, this really like I I have no words. I think, in general, anybody nobody should react um, personally at the expression of like legitimate suspicions or even questions in the non-ironic way uh, like i'm just asking questions like actual questions should 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 and and should be uh welcomed i think by players who have like anomalous statistics and i i, I do i mean i'm the first to say that like you know there aren't a lot of people who can hit you know like 3200 and they're 26 20 feet and retired from classical um okay so so at first i wasn't happy with the kind of nasty insinuating tone I went on uh, Levitov Chess, the, the Russian channel, seven months ago, and this was after Kramnik had put out his first tweet about me. Um, and, you know, I, I talked a little bit about that. And uh, and so I was more than happy to sort of dispel any suspicious suspicions that had occurred. And I think it's it's really incumbent upon the quote unquote onliners uh, to, to act in good faith and to show that they, if they truly have nothing to hide, then, um, it, you know, what does it cost me to... Uh, to do a stream where I reveal my setup, or what does it cost me to put a second or third or 18th camera uh, now uh, behind me just to show, you know, that it's not a bot making the moves with my hand on the mouse? What does it cost me to, um, you know, publish my chess-based game history uh, on a particular day? Nothing, right? I have nothing to hide. I'm happy to do those things, provided that the uh, that the other party is a like expressing legitimate suspicions in a polite way and making it very clear that this is not a personal attack. They want to be able to play me in peace and I totally get that. So I was trying to act that way at the start, but the thing is like the level shifted from, okay, legitimate suspicions, um, legitimate questions, let's say. I express suspicions about players. You know, I'm, I hope that they don't react in the same way and like, oh, Naradisky's evil. How dare he, you know, claim that this guy played all computer moves in, in our title Tuesday game. This is just incredible. Somehow he is he is allowed to use to bring his authority to bear and and try to like destroy my reputation. Um because as you said, Christian, this is a stain. It's much harder to wipe, you know, you can put that shirt in the laundry a million times. But but the stain it's hard to get the stain off. And you know, it, it's hard when you come into like Anisha's chat or any chat and you're there cheat ski, you're like People are just being nasty about this, and it doesn't matter how much, how many times I've discredited the source of these accusations or how absurd the accusations are on their face. We can get to Bishop C8, but Bishop C8 is is as bad as the accusations made during the you know Salem witch trials in the 1690s. And I really want to talk about the witch trials because he is quoting verbatim from some of the interrogating techniques. Uh, so if he wants to return to Puritan Massachusetts in the 1690s, it was a great time to be alive. Um, I think you should experience what daily life was back then, um, because clearly uh, Vlad is a, is a big fan of, uh, of the legal process of that time. Vladimir, I think it was about a year ago, it's, it's pretty recent, maybe a year and, and a few months ago that he um, started his online campaign against cheating, which uh, on its face, of course, is, is very fair. I mean, cheating is, uh, is a terrible thing and the less cheating we have. So fighting cheating, what could be better? Uh, and and definitely with some uh, caveats, I was close to on board with what he was saying at the start about a year ago. But then there, there was like a lot of mixed messaging. It started with, uh, you know, accuracy, like the cap score on chess.com, which I, I think I've said multiple times is not really a metric to go by. I mean, if, if someone is doing 100% throughout the tournament, yeah, that that's that's cheating. I, if a 900 is performing 95% every game, yeah, that's almost certainly cheating. But uh, you shouldn't be like judging between grandmasters performing 89% or 92% over 11 games because a lot of these accuracies are based on are you finding the most accurate way to win? Like, is it plus five or plus seven? Things like that, right? 
it's not really a metric to determine the quality of a game. And then, then he went into the statistics of um, like what's the probability of a, a player scoring eight and a half out of 11, right? Based on their chess.com okay. rating or FIDE rating, these were very often mixed up. And I, I think that you should have consistent number, like you should either stick to FIDE ratings or chess.com ratings across the board. You shouldn't just like jump between the two to, to determine your, your statistics. Uh, and then a lot of it was not even based on anything. It was just, I challenge you to a match. Which, which is not a combat. science. <laughs> it's not yeah, a trial by combat. It's not. It's not a scientific method. You know, uh, if you play Kramnik, you prove either you are or aren't. And then a lot of his stuff was dropped. Like you play, he plays two matches, and then there is no conclusion to this all. And then I'm left wondering, like, what was the point of this whole uh, crusade? Uh, I mean, interesting <laughs> though it may be to watch. Uh, what what was the Conclusion, I never found out what his opinion is after the result of two <laughs> I, matches. I mean, I expressed it few times publicly, first time after the match, then in my interviews, then after the second match, which they forget to mention all of them. It's like, uh, Fabi, I mean, sorry, but prepare for interview. I mean, of course, you don't have to follow my statement, but if you're already talking about me and about this subject, maybe you could have prepared a bit, yeah. I was just listening. I was trying to get, do some research for the, for this episode. Yeah, you didn't try because uh, I, actually what you tell is, I'm sorry, has nothing to do with the reality. Then I was listening to his uh, most recent one, which dropped just today. But uh, I, I, I did many after the match, you know, I mean, like on Nepa podcast, uh, Lenier Dominguez podcast. I mean, I said a lot about it. How come you did the research and you didn't find it? And he did just mention uh, I think for the first time, perhaps in the English speaking. <laughs> okay, so what, what is this? What, where is your professionalism? I hope you're unbiased, but how can you, if you did the research, how couldn't you find those? Even Daniel knows, I mean, who, who was not specially, I guess, prepared for it, but you pretend that you prepared. I mean, I have nothing against you, but it's like, it's really strange. I mean, world uh, about his conclusion his personal conclusion about those ones and his main point was that he finally got to show the world that there's no big difference between online and over the board chess performance not main it was one of many but okay it's partly true yeah i mean that it's true that's what i explained but it was just one of many so Kramnik, yeah, he kind of was dancing around, like beating around the bush. He said, yeah, you know, the results of the match were inconclusive. And, you know, on the one hand, I mean, the fact that he didn't beat me by a large margin, you know, clearly shows that I was legitimate and acting the way that I did and blah, blah, blah. But on the other, like he and, you know, this is the thing. I mean, he's just pathologically incapable of admitting. I mean, again, you see, uh, the, he starts to insult, actually violating the reality that it's true what I said, that I was very compatible in the first match and I even won the second match now. And he is calling this claim, which is totally according to the reality, a pathological and so on. I mean, this is just incredible. I mean, just I want to see that people see it and uh, I mean, who is here bullying? Who is uh, insulting? Who is uh, evil force here? <laughs> I'm sorry, using Dania's words. What is all this? I mean, why? A, that he's ever wrong. Um, B, that he is, you know, yeah, like essentially he acts perfectly and he will... Ch I never said that I act perfectly. Again, again, just manipulation after manipulation, Danny. Change the narrative and literally deny reality. No, it's you who are denying reality. I mean, final score in, of two matches and now you know it, it's equal. And I had 0-7 online without draws, seven losses in tournament, in uh, titled Tuesday games. So this is the reality. I mean, uh, it's incredible to see how Dania is repeatedly actually simply faking the reality. It's already, you, you, you see, it's not the first time. He's just doing it so brutally that, okay, I'm really like shocked and I don't know what to say about it other than just to give a proof that he is actually he's delusional here or i don't know purposely or not purposely but yeah just the reality proved my point that's the case for as long as it takes uh no matter how how much like mental acrobatics you have to do uh in order to like keep that consistent 
nothing. I just, uh, as I mentioned already, my words were according to the reality. But what are you doing, Danny? Is well, I have no comment. So it's funny because he reversed the reversed the timeline with me. He started by offering the duel with Jospin. I think he started with a lot of by casting suspicions and then ended with, okay, now you have a choice. Either we play or et cetera, or I keep going. With me, he was like, either we play at the start for 50K. And that actually was one of the two most toxic things that uh, was hardest for me to dispel because I thought about it actually. I like okay. would be down to play under different circumstances. Like I'd be down to play a supervised online match but yeah. there were reasons that um, that I, I clearly saw that he was not acting in good faith. And well, I mean, this is just your opinion, Danya. It's like I I was I was actually I will tell you later the whole the true story, not this uh, what he something was very very wrong here. Presented. And the fact that people didn't see that at first, the fact that people were like, okay, okay, but but like this sounds like you're making excuses for not playing. Like, no, he's literally saying. Yeah, it's a valid uh, valid opinion. Yeah, I mean. Maybe, yes, it's the case. Unless I beat him by the equivalent of our online score, which is like heavily in my favor. Correct. Like, even if I win the match, he will, like, his behavior will not change. I mean, it is just uh, such an obvious manipulation. What happened? I offered to play a match because that is my concept uh, that uh, every onliner, let's say, person who perform, overperform online according to the OTB status especially those who never play who but practically do not play online so they it would be good if they if they will play otb event under surveillance and it can be me can be anyone else his opponent fabi for instance dania and that's what i expressed and actually in this particular time what i said that i'm even ready to risk my fifty thousand dollars i will put it on the table in case i lose uh, I mean, what is this manipulation? Danny is saying that then I will not change my position. I'm losing $50,000 of my own money in case I lose. Because what I want to say, I'm responsible for my words. Yeah, I mean, I'm ready to risk uh, even my own money. So to pretend that I, I was like, uh, uh, you know, it was not a... Uh, it was win-win situation for me. It's just a lie, yeah, because I'm putting my own money. And I said, Danya can put his own money. So 50-50, 100 uh, is a winner takes 100. Danya can put his own money on the table or crowdfunding money or sponsor money. I, I, I don't even request him to put his own money. I'm going to do it with my own. And then let's play. Then I also added that I'm ready to play for free as well. So my idea was that I like make interest for Danny because he is much better he, I mean player online he has a huge advantage uh, with me in uh, online blitz games and we'll come back to it later so he has a much much better chances almost for sure according to our personal record and ratings and so on that he's going to win so I mean that was to interest him but then I added that if he wants to play for free excellent I'm ready to play for free and I then I wrote on my Twitter that any anything he likes so what what are you talking about Dania why is this again I'm just catching you and you can see it on my Twitter I'm catching you uh, actually faking the reality gaslighting it calls I'm sorry to be uh, straight one tournament cannot be the litmus test for cheating. Like if I do badly in the World Blitz Championship and I'm playing it for the first time, in what world? What about Blitz Championship? What What are you talking about, Dania? We played together. I showed the statistics, which Fabi also misrepresents. He didn't see it. Uh, well, but anyway, uh, according to what he's saying later, but uh, we played over 40 games. Uh, three plus one, three plus two. We never played three zero, by the way, and Fabi is making mistakes uh, later. And you beat me like uh, with a huge margin, really like plus 15 or some even more. I mean, like you're obviously much superior players. I mean, 40 games, it's a lot. Yeah, in different days, different uh, sections. So now what I propose, a match like we played with uh, just Pam, it was uh, what was something similar, like 30 plus games, I think. Yeah. So, OK, if you're in 40 consecutive game in dif different days, you are much superior than me. So, I mean, uh, you you just cannot really lose. I mean, it's very unlikely that you would lose a match of in three different days. 
is the same time control etc i mean so what what is what is mean here what is uh, uh, like you are pretending that I have bad uh, intentions or something. It's just, it's just awful, awful what you are doing, Dania, here on this interview. I'm sorry. Can that be then um, used to explain? It has nothing to do with this world championship you're going to play. What it has to do with it? Playing, I, I don't know how many online games I've played, like 50,000? Maybe, I don't know, even hundreds, who cares? I played a lot in my life also, but we together, we played uh, 40 games or even more. And I have the worst performance against Dania than any other player on the platform. And I played with Fabi, with Nipomnishi, with many very strong players. I have the worst against Dania. But I, I, I never understood that, like why you became the target because I always felt like a lot of suspicion about people without even saying any names. I never said any names, maybe privately, but uh, but of course there's a lot of suspicion. Probably some of it's wrong, some of it. I would assume is correct because obviously there is some cheating but i never felt this about you because like you you have like a very consistent pattern which is that you are a very strong player uh and then in blitz you do perform better than in classical which is which is logical i mean some players are, are more comfortable in blitz and classical and without increment you get stronger but like very noticeably in bullet and consistently in three minutes uh and then in like online 3-2 or 3-1, whatever we play in title Tuesday, and over the board uh, 3-2, then there's also like a lot of consistency. So it just felt like a very consistent pattern pattern overall, and I never felt like the slightest suspicion, uh, even though suspicion, of course, doesn't necessarily mean anything. But then I was surprised when when it like kind of came out because I thought, okay, of all, all the possible, you know, cheating targets. Hey, me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, did, it did feel a bit random. To me, to me, but uh, but then like it got increasingly more clear that okay, he's he he like has this target for whatever reason, and and it's kind of uh, singular at this point. It's not like he's discussing, you know, uh, last title Tuesday. A hive, like, a hive yeah, of like cheaters. There's, there's a bunch of weird things. No, it's like this, and and then okay, we'll probably get into this, and and you can you can talk about it uh, in more detail. But then we got into like the kind of fourth stage of like what's suspicious like we had the statistics the cap score the results the trial by combat and then we had the eye movement slash uh <laughs> mo hidden monitors in the room let's call it the evidence like That's, then the evidence was laid out right continue yeah the the kind of uh <laughs> let, let's call it like hard hard evidence because mm -hmm. if someone was cheating with something that you could see that would be hard evidence right like a uh, phone in the bathroom <laughs> he was a that, that was like the hard evidence right this is some of the craziest shit i've ever like came across this like because of course like when there's the bishop c8 thing which i want to discuss separately christian like you i, I also don't want to like you know uh take the wheel here too much no um, no please do should please i just do. like talk about this one by one okay so yes and, um, and yeah, actually, look yes, i don't want yeah i don't want it to sound like uh you know some sort of uh uh, questioning situation no. or investigation that we're running ourselves uh, I just want to make sure that by the end of it we're going to cover basically or at least as many accusations let's say or questions that Kramnik had so that you know we kind of delve into everything yeah no totally I, I don't think of it that way and you know you guys are are um, it's, it's not about like what a person genuinely thinks but you're you're good faith actors and um, you know obviously like I'm I want to talk about this because I want to expose how fucked up it is um, on, 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 you know, a million levels. And, you know, the people on my stream who are like, well, if you had just ignored it, uh, then this would not have become such a big thing. I really, you know, that that presses my buttons um, because it doesn't press my space bar, though, uh, because it just like it, it's such a disingenuous way of looking at it. I'm not trying to seek attention with this, but but the people who are buying into this narrative, they exist at many levels, including at the very top level, and they include a large number of chess fans. Like this is doing very serious damage and actual damage. It's not just like bots or, you know, Russian spies who are believing Kramnik. He is like, he has a lot of authority. He's a fucking world champion. Okay. And like people say that, but they don't understand what that means and how much authority that gives you. There's like 14 of those guys, you know, and like ever, okay. So, um, in terms of the like evidence, let's start with the, um, 
Like yesterday I asked Kramnik, can you lay out specifically what are the points that you want me to disprove? And he didn't answer because that is the nature of the shifting goalpost. But if I could pin down like, what is the body of evidence? First of all, the eye movements, okay? So the eye movements um, exist in two different forms. And now I think that it's taken on three different like specific varieties. The first is um, based on a game that I played with Kramnik uh, in Tidal Tuesday that I put out on my YouTube channel, which is one of the many things that makes this kind of a theater of the absurd. The fact that like, okay, so he thinks I cheated on my Twitch stream and then I immortalized that by, by then asking my editor to put it on my YouTube channel. It's not an argument in my defense. It's just like funny um, that he never like paused to think about how shameless I would have to be. Um, so Fabi, Christian, you know what I'm talking about. Like that, that game with Kramnik, right? Queen I, H4 I, check. I think I've seen it. Yes, yes. The, the I, Queen H4 was the sexy move. Yeah. It was the sexy move. And after that, I, you know, in the same video, he looks at a game with Wesley. But one of the biggest sources of his confusion is that I have two different streaming spaces. Okay. So where I sit, I'm sitting right now is my main streaming I was just space. About yeah. To, to ask you about Go ahead. that because I think this is something, this is a new point that he just brought uh, in today's episode where he talks about you having two very distinct uh, spaces. This one was the one that you used for Levitov Chess and the ones that he's presented in previous episodes. Yeah, it's my home office. It's a different one, yes. But it's like my main one, right? So this is my home office. I have a, a tower, like, I don't know, what do you call this computer that's not a laptop? Uh, desktop. Desktop, oh. <laughs> yeah, so there's like a thing underneath, like the computer itself and then two monitors and a camera between the monitors and a mic and um, a fourth and fifth and sixth monitor that I'll get to. I was trying to joke on the Levitov show. I mean, the guy is so humorless. I was like, like... Yeah, that is really funny. I mean, it's not humor. I didn't find this joke funny, first of all. But secondly, he's telling uh, nonsense uh, again. And then he understands himself that he is telling nonsense because he couldn't see my face. Not because I was hiding, but because there were, uh, it was experimental. They just sent me the link that I couldn't switch on my camera there. And I explained it. So he lies again. Um... Let me show all six of my monitors. I didn't find it extremely funny, this joke, so I ignored it in a way. Levitov laughed and like, Kramnik just like stony faced. Well, stony faced, I mean, he didn't see my face. Eh? Well, I don't know what his face was because he was uh -huh. uh, too much of a chicken to turn his camera on. I mean, again, this kind of very dirty, very cheap attack because I told at the very beginning of the stream together, he knows it, that I just cannot unfortunately switch on my camera because of the link was uh you know was kind of done because they didn't prepare for me to be here by the way uh, uh he, himself uh dania he at the last moment like one day before we agreed to it three days before then one day one evening before he just uh, refused to have it three of us so i was not prepared and then during this stream Actually, I, I received the message that, okay, do you, would you like to join? Actually, I was uh, having dinner, you know, so I urgently joined. They sent me the link in between during the stream, and that's why it was not working properly, which is actually this, Daniel doesn't know, but this is like, again, I mean, lie after lie, but really, I mean, it's, it's just really awful, but we will continue. Whew. I don't know what to say. This I've never experienced this in my life, and I'm really telling you the truth. This amount of lies, of aggression, of insults, which uh, Dania personal insults, which Dania is doing, and and very often deliberate lies. I mean, this is really a disgrace. I mean, I'm sorry to to use this word, but it's a really a disgrace. Uh, but okay, I will try to gather my forces to to take another shower and then to continue in a part three commenting something which already I guess that's <laughs> the whole situation is too ripe for for humor and fucking with people. So I, I do it and I'm going to continue to do it.